up, baby? We're live. What is going on? How are we doing? Good How way. is it going this evening? It's a new day. It's a new good. land investing day. What? I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty, pretty good. Me too. Yeah. Feeling pretty good. Matt Forrest, you feeling pretty good? I'm feeling great. Not going to lie. Big pour, big cocktail. Feeling Woo. great. What are you drinking tonight? Is that the Bully Boy? I am back to the Bully Boy. I was uh, been off it for a while. I've been in the the Tito's and soda, all these places. I'm back to my home. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering the bottle. I love if it. you've uh, heard of this one. Derringer? Der Derringer. Derringer? Yeah, Dar I don't know how to say it. Straight bourbon whiskey finished in, in sherry casks. Uh, this, my Ooh. son Joshua brought me to, in, <laughs> to a <laughs> local uh, <laughs> a liquor store where he knows the people. And they have such a wide selection. I wish I had seen it before Bossman left. I could have brought him there. And this guy was like, and here's one of my favorite ones. I'm like, I'll take it. I know yeah. just the place Dude. you drink it. You had me at favorite and bourbon. Yeah. Do you know good. this is about this is about the fifth time you've said to me since I left Boston, okay. Scott? I found this great thing after you left. I found this great <laughs> bourbon. I found. I found this great bourbon. I found this amazing restaurant. Uh, you after you left, you know what's crazy is that every time he talks to me, he's like, "No, come up. I just found this. This is a great new restaurant." Uh, yeah. That's right. Strange. Yeah, it's uh, it's retroactive with me and proactive with you. Cheers. Well, we Cheers, can't fellas. all live in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. You know, we can. What That's can true. Say? Oh, I gotta turn those on. Uh, we got some comments coming. Uh, oh, A. Boy. Scott Ford is here. A Al J. Ford. Al J. Ford. Al J. Ford. Sorry, boy, my eyes read that wrong. Um, Larry Overstreet is here. Larry. Oh my God! Will you Larry. sing the song, Scott? Sing the song. Where oh, in the world Larry. is Larry Overstreet? I love, I love Carmen San Diego. Um, Larry Overstreet, I, I did get your Facebook message, and then I got locked out of Facebook, and I don't ever look at Facebook. And uh, dude, I owe you a phone call. Larry, I'll write and, back. Write to me. I'll listen, sorry. I'm here. I'll write back, Larry. Write this is me. funny. This is funny because I also owe Larry uh, a Facebook message. And what I was going to say to Larry is, Larry, tomorrow night doesn't work uh, because my boys and I have a baseball game. But Friday morning, if you happen to be spinning through, uh, let's meet up for some coffee. Coffee talk. So he, I just messaged you, Larry Overstreet, on Facebook. <laughs> So there you go. There's a there lot you of Larry go. Overstreet love here. I love. I well, we already know where he is, he's so we don't have to well, guess. That's it. Let's guess. Well, let's guess if he's potentially spinning through Friday morning. Oh, I gotta look at the states are close to Boston. Like, uh, I'll go with nowhere. <laughs> wow. Going to go with Rhode Island for a dollar. <laughs> uh, you guys suck. All right. He's gotta, he's gotta be in Wisconsin then, right? Is that where he's well, at? You know, he's a, he's a Wisconsin, well, I don't know if he's a Wisconsin native or not. I can't remember that, but he lived in Wisconsin for a long time before he uh, s packed up his home, sold his home, and bought an RV. And he, I, I love this. I love the fact that Larry is working his land business on the road. Yeah, uh, and uh, the, the, boy, you know what, Mike? We've been on now for three years. It was right around... When we started Nightcap, that I think we had Larry Overstreet on the show. Well, when he... you know why, Larry, full disclosure, by the way, Larry and I are having a full-on discussion now on Facebook. Uh, I'm yeah. sure you are, yes. Anyway, the reason why we haven't had him back on is because he's much better sounding than we are. He has the better mic. Like He is a voice Whoa. made for podcasting. Hold on. He doesn't have a better mic than everybody on the show. <laughs> just he you just two might. make poop. He just might. I mean, he is made for the podcasting. He's got oh. that right... He's got been a podcaster for a long time. Threatened Larry by you, so we bring you on sparingly. That's right. For sure. For sure. But uh, a perfect example of uh, the fact that you can do this business, and we should probably talk about the business at some point since we're 10 <laughs> minutes into the call. 
Uh, why are we here? We're here to talk land investing. We're also here to have a drink, but probably more importantly, we should talk about land investing and uh, how it can, you know, listen, this can create a passive income stream in your life that is really powerful. And you, it's a scalable business. Everything can be automated. Everything can be outsourced. And you can do this business where you want, when you want, with whomever you want. Right. Even your friend in Wisconsin. Even my friend in Wisconsin. I guess we need to do a deal for them. It's like, have you guys have probably done deals together? Or I've done deals with uh, with uh, Scott, but I don't think we've done a deal. So I feel like that's got to happen. I got, I got a deal for you. Well, I'll give you a call. Let's we'll uh, let's all do a let's let's all do a like a major deal together. Okay. Do you want to do a whale? Let's like do a whale. I'm currently whale hunting, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Wow, oh. I have a picture in my head when you said that. It's like National Lampoon's Vacation, but it's a version of you kind of riding on top of a piece of land with a spear looking for a whale, like mm -hmm. all cartoonish. I mean, that's what I look like normally, so yeah. <laughs> no, Forbes sure. on a whale hunt. <laughs> uh, Larry Overstreet is in Union, Illinois. Uh, visiting the family farm. If I remember correctly, I think it's Mary Beth's brother's farm uh, or sister's farm. But they they hang out. They hung out there for a while last summer. So nice, good memory. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, fellas, uh, guess who did not bring a topic other than you two? Uh, Mike Wait Zana? a minute. Is that two weeks in a row? What's going uh... on here? I mean, it, it, yeah, and actually, no, last week I think I brought a topic. Your nickname is Topic Guy. Yeah. Oh, is that, is that my nickname? What the crap? Yeah. You got any questions? Uh, I don't see any questions. No questions yet. That's all right, though. Oh, we got a we, Facebook user is, uh, is celebrating a win here, though. Uh, I'll see if I can get into Facebook and see who it is. He says, good evening, Land Geeks. Crazy win to get today. A guy came to my cabin in Castilla, lost and looking for directions to a property for sale. I said, you don't want that one. You want this one. And I sold him. <laughs> that has to be Keith Forche, I would think. It's got to be. That's awesome, that, for the record. And Keith, thanks for kicking him off my property. You're the best man. Yeah, thanks a lot, Keith, for uh, steering him away from my property up the road in Castilla, because I probably have one there. Yeah, uh, Keith. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty awesome though. Uh, Peter Capil says wins is a great topic. I love wins. We could talk wins all night long. You have a topic though. We all talked night. about this the other day. Yeah, Remember? but I, I I think we need to wait till next week because I wasn't able to compile the information I wanted to. Right, so we're let's unveil that one next time. Next time. But uh, uh, Keith Forche says it wasn't a land geek guy. Who, I guess who was selling the land. He had never heard of him. So. Then, then by all means, take that take that sale from out, out from underneath them. <laughs> uh, Peter, Listen, if you're there, legit. If you're there, yeah. And somebody comes to your door, dude, you own it. Come on, come on with that. I think I might set up shop uh, in a small home in Castilla. Um, Peter Capillo wins is a great topic. So Peter, I think you need to share something because I'm pretty sure you've had a win or two this week, something about he paid back his flight school investment already, or he made back his flight school investment already, and I think he just started office hours, fellas, so he made back his flight school investment in 10, 11 weeks. Nice. So that's pretty awesome, Peter. We need some numbers. We need to know what deals you've done. Yeah. It's exciting. It's great. But uh, yeah, other, you guys got a topic? <laughs> wow so mike i didn't even tell you um yesterday yeah. for the roundtable podcast mm. um very short notice taria harris says i can't be there scott todd says i can't be there tate says i'm in hawaii on vacation mark's in st louis uh visiting his mom and dad which i love he just flew into st louis on sunday and surprised his mom for uh, mother's day which was pretty awesome uh so mark uh left it to me and eric peterson to do the round table yesterday 
But party of two. Party of two. We called in Matt Fours at the last minute, so it was a party of three on the round table yesterday. And uh, the host. I, I would just like I to was... point out that literally none of you have jobs. Like, none of you. <laughs> no, I have a real job. I go to work. Like I, I have a job, and I made it to the round table. I, Mike, you're excluded. You have a real job too. I don't know why, but you, you, whatever. You have a real job. But none of these other clown shows have a job. They just do land. Like, and I know it's a job and blah, blah, blah. But, like, come on. Can't <laughs> come, come on, to the blah, call. Blah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, it was very nice of you, Matt, to fill in last minute. It just so happened that you had a cancellation, right? And I'm sure your boss didn't mind that you, that you filled in. Oh my hung God. out with us for a while. To be fair, I'm the number one rep in my company. Like, I can take a half an hour off and chat with you. Somebody says, um, check the volume. What's up? Is our volume all porked? Oh, or what? maybe it's oh, me. Boy. Oh, boy. You know, boy. I do okay. want to give a shout out to my... I've been using this now for over a month, Scott, so it's passing the test. Okay. Superhuman, superhuman my email, uh, my new email uh, app. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Superhuman? Yeah. All right. It's well, very blazingly fast. If it passes the 30-day test with Zeno, then it's definitely worth looking into. It's blazingly uh, fast. They Peter Capil says Scott is fine as far as the uh, the volume goes, but oh. Matt and Mike are a little low. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes. Testing. There. <laughs> testing. Peter. <laughs> testing. How's that, Peter? I mean, I'm oh. yellow. You know what? I'm breaking out the wireless mic for next week. I just for... turned up my that's gain. It. I think that does something. That'll, that'll, that's what gain does. Yes. It's actually what it does. Oh, fair. it's like the definition of gain. It's, it's, yeah. it's what it does. <laughs> yes. uh, AJ, <laughs> Al. That. <laughs> yeah, let us know, Peter, how that is. Uh, Al J. Ford says, I'm a newbie, but I've actually sent a mailer out. Um, Good. Which... I don't know what that says there, um, which enlightens that something is the route to go. For about nine months, I've studied everything. Let me know if this is it for me. Let us know, let you know if this is it for you. Well, uh, I don't know if we can make that decision for you. What is he saying exactly? I'm not sure if what is yeah. it for him. I, like, am I drunk? What 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 is he saying? <laughs> I don't. I'm not quite sure. Al J Ford, AJ Ford, can you uh, maybe just retype that for us? Uh, help me, help me out. I, I have a difficult time comprehending things after a few bourbons. Uh, Dave Eberfeld is here. How's everyone keeping track of their monthly passive income total? Just a simple Excel sheet. I'm surprised that GeekPay doesn't have that report available. Well, that's a great suggestion, honestly, uh, for the GeekPay team. Um, well, you can export a monthly but, report. Yeah, you just export the monthly report. Yeah, I mean, it, have your VA add it up. Yeah, uh, or just you know do a sum all. Um, this yeah, is how you do it. Yeah, or but I, I guess we don't get it in, in GeekPay. We get it in QuickBooks. It, that's how it comes to us in our business. Uh, but yeah, you could certainly export the month and um, and add it up. That's not hard. Yeah. Definitely in your accounting software, uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, we have a spreadsheet that I like on Airtable where it shows how much money we're in, like for 2021, for instance. Shows how much money we've purchased or how much money we've spent on land, and it shows how much money we have in terms, like the enterprise value. Uh, so that's kind of a nice uh, metric to see. That's a big uh, number. Big yeah. boy. Yeah, big the number. Enterprise value. Come on, baby. That's a big number. A record, record first quarter this year. So that's all good. I'm sure. Um, these dudes are super dads with tech. Well, I think we are all super dads. Uh, wait till next week. I'm I, going. I'm going to break out the suitcase. I brought it over oh here boy. to have it at work. I've, I've got it. It's right here. The mixer. <laughs> We're doing the suitcase. I'll be good to go next week. <laughs> All right, sounds good. In case we saw in person at the hotel. We'll see who's loud next week, boys. I've officially seen that set up twice now. Once at the boot camp in Texas, I believe, and once at the gathering in Boston. 
Wasn't that San Antonio? He didn't bring it to Texas. Life? He just had multiple monitors and like five whiteboards in the room. San Antonio had the whole shebang there. Oh, in my hotel room? We, yeah. On the, the table? No, I didn't have the mixer with me, but we had, yeah, we were working. That boot camp, uh, I was like upgraded to a suite. I had like, I used my once a year Marriott upgrade. So we had this legit suite at that hotel. That it hotel is nice. awesome. We had like a whole kitchen table. In our, it was like a two bathroom hotel room. It was ridiculous. And uh, me and a couple of my uh, land friends, we spent a lot of time working up there. Like, legit, yeah. we worked the whole time. It was really cool. Highly see recommend. You guys, see you guys walking into the hotel. Looks like some special ops is going on. Walking in with the black bar. What are these people doing? <laughs> Nothing we're to see to, here, folks. Nothing we're to see. to kill you. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Uh, indeed. Matt Forbes, I think that was a pivotal boot camp for you because I'm not, I, I recall, uh, I don't think people, I don't think you would mind me saying this, but you were in a little bit of a dip then. And oh, I remember so having a very, a, the window. a very late night conversation with you and Marie yeah. one night after we were at the bar, which is a very cool yeah. bar, by the way, in the San Antonio. Yeah. Um, that guy still knows what we drink. He does. Yeah. By the way, he does know what we drink. He's like, uh, a bottle of wine for the missus and fruity girl drink for the mister. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you remember me? You, me. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, that was a t- you know that was a really interesting boot camp because I wasn't sure if I was going to learn anything new, which of course I did. I don't know why I was sort of doubting. Um, the business wasn't going that great. Right. We hadn't bought property in a while. We weren't selling a ton. And um, that was also the boot camp where we had Jen and Tyler come up to our room and uh, and work where they were like, we need a place to work. And we're like, we have a kid like we literally have a table. We don't know you that well, but coming up. And that's where we formed uh, our little accountability group. Nice. And then from there, so the conversation with you and Zeno up there, and from there, literally everything started to turn for us. So that was a big boot camp for us. It was good. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, you you got got to hand it to you guys. You didn't quit. You just kept at it, right? That's all you got to um, do. That that's was, all you got to do. That's the origination of that quote. That time. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. Whoever is new. Who's new? Who's new is here? John Lewis, uh, Peter Capil's relatively new, uh, Al J. Ford. Yeah, like those are man. new faces. Although, to be fair, Peter's like I sold two since the last last nightcap. I've yeah, only sold two, since and one since. today. That's killer. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I mean, that's all you got to do, right? Is just don't. You just got to keep going, and you know, the business is hard. It's constantly hard to... execute, continually refine. That's it. Keep mailing. Keep marketing. And just keep going. I mean, ask anybody who's successful, and they all didn't quit. Ask anybody who's unsuccessful, and they all quit. That's it. It's super easy. Just don't quit. Just keep going, right? Just just don't quit. It sounds pretty simple to me. It is. It's really hard to execute, for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, totally worth it, though, when you have a massive air table full of loans. It's awesome. Yes. All right, this is from John Lewis. Hey, crew, I just started flight school last night. John, congrats, but had been That's using John. LG Pass uh, for about a month. Got my first land under contract last night. So on the night you started flight school, you got your first property under contract. That's pretty awesome. Everything looks great. Any negative surprises I should be looking for? No. Negative surprises? <laughs> uh, I don't know. John Lewis, tell us the numbers. What'd you buy it for? What'd you sell it for? And um, did he say he sold it or he said he just bought it? Well, he said he got his first land under. Oh, got his first land under contract. So uh, sorry, that could mean he's just got a, a signed purchase agreement. My bad. I no, probably I misinterpreted that. I, you could be right. So be John, right. let's talk. Let's talk about it. Uh, if it's a signed purchase agreement, what did you offer? And did they accept the offer? Did they counter offer? And anatomy of a deal. That's a let's, great new segment. We call someone up. We get someone to give us the anatomy of a deal. Yeah, let's deal. let's talk about the deal. Uh, so give us the deet. Give us the deets. Give us the uh, give us your offer price. Give us the comps. Uh, give us the um, what else? You might actually be able to wholesale right on the show. 
Yeah, you might. <laughs> might be able to. We that For that's sure. very true. We should, you know, uh, very. We did it during boot camp too. The wholesale segment of the nightcap where you can post your deals and we'll talk about them and uh, see if you can sell it by the end of the show. We may, we could have one property sold every night in the nightcap. Someone could sell their property wholesale. I bet that could happen. Let's get it done. All right, so his offer was five sixty-five. So I'm guessing the comps are around two thousand, um, and they signed it. So did they give you an email address and did they give you a phone number? Because I hate it when they show up in the mail and there's no email address and no phone number on the signed purchase Do you think agreement. That's an actual um, non-accept. I mean, so I've heard, I've talked to people about this, and some people view those as that's not really them accepting it. They're just like throwing it back at you. What are your thoughts, guys? Uh, it's annoying either way. It returns to you with no signature, <laughs> nothing. It's just a blank return of it. Uh, what I'm saying, Matt. How do you interpret um, that? I, we run it down. I mean, right. Yeah, you got to run it Jason down. Speaking, do you feel good? Of, you know, I'm just curious. I mean, there's no right answer here. You know, some people look at those. Yeah, like, ah, this someone's just throwing it back at us. Or you know, uh, I'm just curious what you guys think. Um, no, no right answer. I, it's not as good as somebody who writes back saying how much they love you because you're buying their land. Right. But, you know, for the most part, it's a, it's a return. So we chase it. I mean, they don't convert nearly as high as somebody who flat out accepts. But, um, yeah, it's better than no mail, I think. Right? I would put it in that category. Although, yeah. really strange side note today, I went to the post office, and I have everything coming to a P.O. box now. And I had like 40 letters that came back that were not, not, I didn't get the yellow sticker. They literally just got mailed out and then they came back to me. And I asked the postmaster, who's, who's a real estate agent in town. So we're starting to get to know that guy. And I'm like, Dude, what is the deal? I'm like, did you, I'm like, you, the federal government, you, did you even mail this? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's weird. He's like, we could probably just remail those and not have to pay any more money. He's like, I think the machine reading it was like upside down, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I mean, I have mailed tens of thousands. Did you just of hand letters. them over to him? Yeah. And he just like, he like literally X'd out with a pen the stuff and then he put them back in the thing. He's like, he's like, that's really, really strange. I'm like, all right. So that was uh, like their return mail that are going back out. We'll see what happens. But wow. yeah, that was a weird day. Did he ask you about what you do? He knows what I do. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know why he doesn't want to do it. Right. Um, Cause he sees me open the mail and get, you know, get Does responses. You jump up and down and scream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Woohoo. No, but I, you know, look, I mean, I, I flat out told him, I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, the, you know, you went, you had to go form this relationship for the last 15 years to go sell this house, and you made 25,000, and that's awesome, Randy, and I love it. Like, I, I made 38,000. I sent this guy a letter, and some other people did some stuff. So, you know, you know, good for you, but uh, I like my way better. You know, I spent one millionth the amount of time. Right. So he still hasn't been like, yeah, let's let I would teach me. I want to go do this. I'm like waiting for the day, but. Uh, right. We'll see. Like a He'll come around. Yeah. It's weird how people. It's weird how like the people I know who know me who know the some level of the success I'm having aren't like yeah teach me Obi Wan. No, I I agree with that. And I, <laughs> it makes no sense. Because I feel that uh, you know I'm I'm an open book. I would tell anybody anything, but I don't yeah. want to bring it up because. It could, I don't know if it sounds like it's bragging, you know, but if someone brings it up, I'm willing to talk about it very openly and anything they want to know for sure. Yeah. I don't like if, if, dude, if I'm your friend and you're like, yeah, I, you know, bought it for $400 and I sold it for 2000 I bought yeah. it for 8000 I'm sold bringing it for you a bottle of bourbon every night and making you talk about it. Oh, here's another bottle for you, Matt. So yeah, tell and, me a little more. Poor, poor, poor. And you're open <laughs> and you like talking about it. Dude, you're my new best friend. For sure. You're my new best friend. Yeah. I don't understand my friends. I don't like, I don't, it doesn't resonate with me. Anyone of them said any other anything with the kind of returns I'm getting and the money I'm making, I'd be all over them, all over it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a different kind of person. I don't know. Maybe you're uh, just too tall and intimidating. I am tall um, and I am intimidating. That's for sure.
Um, all right. Half. I mean, come on, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, John Lewis says, uh, all right, so here's about John Lewis's deal. They signed and sent uh, an email with a picture of their signature. He went through 90% of the due diligence today. He spoke with them. They agreed on the exact same price. Nice. Uh, so there you go. Uh, he understands the process. Um, he, you're finishing due diligence. Uh, so again, um, feels solid. And the assessed value he has is 2700 So I would ask, uh, when you say assessed value, John, do you mean like the county assessed value or do you mean the market value? Uh, and that's a question that all of us have to ask ourselves when we're getting into this business. Uh, we want the market value. You want to find comps because the assessed value is kind of an arbitrary number that the county comes up with um, that they base taxes on. Uh, so uh, are the comps in the area the same? And uh, if so, uh, that's a great deal. But you're going to want to look into that. What? Nothing. I was going to say something, but I refrained. I was letting you finish. Aww. I didn't. I, it was a pause. I didn't say anything. I, I no, stopped. Okay. If we knew a little bit more, I was going to say we could try, you know, maybe someone here would like to throw them a wholesale offer. Not us, but someone in the, you know. I mean, yeah, if he's comfortable with. Who doesn't want cash? You want to get it sold on the air tonight? Here, uh, John Lewis, here's my, here's my email, John Lewis. <laughs> Pre-sold. I'd say John. I'd say John Lewis. It's an interesting experiment. If you want to wholesale it and just you know make quick cash, throw details. If you don't, and I understand why you wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, don't and go sell it on terms or do whatever. But uh, you know, Mike Zano is uh, throwing the carrot out there. Yeah, right. One He's of just... us three idiots buys it. Apparently, first. I mean. <laughs> Now we're all just waiting, staring yeah. at comments. <laughs> I, I'm going to have myself a refill. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, go. What is that? Oh, it's a it's an IPA from uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. It's called uh, the S Impossible that? Objects. St. Pauli girl, did you drink that? I drank it. Sure is that did. A Pilsner. What is that? I'd say it's a Pilsner. Yeah. Recently discovered the Pilsners. Really. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a Pil big beer Pilsner? Guy, so I you know, discovered that. You know who had the best Pilsner back in the day? Who? Zeno? Sam Adams. Really? They had, yeah. They had one called the Golden Pilsner, and it was... It's funny that uh, Budweiser did a whole thing about drinkability, but that was a word that I was using with Golden Pilsner when I was in college, living on the no-alcohol wellness floor, shipping that stuff in there by the truckload. Because it was so good. Well, you thought like, not, I don't know if they call it a hall monitor. What do they call those people in charge of floors at the call? Were you that person? The RA? Yeah. The RA. I, I, was put, I was put the residence assistant. I was put on the wellness floor my freshman year. Me. On the wellness floor. Like it's, what does that mean? Like, like, what, like, what's that mean? Wellness. No floor. drugs, no alcohol, no oh. smoking, no, like, no nothing. Like, you pledged to be there. And, and obviously, they couldn't fill up that floor. So Little they did they know. Yeah. So they stuck me there. <laughs> I mean, like, talk about a fish out of water. So all my friends <laughs> were all people who had agreed to, you know, to be on that floor. And right. slowly, one by one, I corrupted them and brought them to the dark side. <laughs> but we ended up staying on the wellness floor all four years. So for four years, uh, the woman who did all this, all the PR for Sam Adams is a friend of the family. And she would hire me to go do different stuff for Jim Cook or whatever, PR-related stuff, right, as a college kid, she'd pay me in beer. Uh, not making this up. You, you would have to go there with a laundry cart to get stuff in. I would, I would check out the laundry cart. I would go down, and I'd go pick up 8, 12 cases of Sam Adams, which is disgusting at that, at that volume, but so good. And I would, like, drive it into the elevator to go into up to the my... wellness center, wellness floor. The wellness floor. It was I would, ridiculous. I would dude. take one look at you and say, this guy is the guy who has keg potties. This is the guy who has the red cups. Like, I'd, I'd be like, he I can't mean, be I, in the wellness floor. I can play Beirut. I mean, like, I'm pretty good. I'm just saying. <laughs> we'll see. 
But anyways, getting back to land, I don't know how we got on that. Again, we, we digress. Information? We were just waiting to see if information would come in on the chat. Uh, John oh, Lewis uh, says he needs he said, more alcohol, and he'll bring it back to the table next week. All right. Yeah. All okay. right. I, I'd say if anybody else out there has a wholesale deal. Yeah, let's you're talk looking about to it. Make some cash live on the nightcap. Yeah, let's make a deal. If you want to sell a property wholesale, just split up the simple numbers. Uh, you know, uh, all the information that where it is and the acreage and the APN, and just throw it out there. Mm -hmm. You're you're really into this whole. Uh, the, you remember the Sunday yeah. morning radio show, yeah. Saturday morning radio yeah. show, where we're nightcap. We have a two-acre yeah. property in Costia, <laughs> which there probably isn't any, so that's not good. Five acres <laughs> in Yeah. Well, there's two point fives in the Wild Horse Mesa. Mm. I wholesaled about forty up there. It's fun. It's funny. It's like you look at wholesale now, and it's like almost like, man, yeah, I got rid of my Bitcoin two years ago. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wholesaled fifty properties in Costia three years ago and sold that Bitcoin. Yep, good call. <laughs> good call. Uh. Al J. Ford has a little bit of information about his uh, his mailings. All right, so uh, he says his first mailer he mailed a thousand. Okay. Acceptance rate, uh, uh, I think that's seven to nine, uh, to Mountain Land. So he got three signed purchase sale agreements. One was landlocked. One was deep in the valley and un unattractive. And the third, the grade was too steep, too Don't steep of a slope. It. Okay, Don't so the it. now the landlocked thing I can understand, right? If it's truly yeah. landlocked, uh, I may be out unless I can talk them down to ten cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, one deep in the valley, unattractive. So oh, that unattractive piece of property, uh, Al J. Ford, to you it sounds like character. Is Matt Forbes' favorite property? Yeah, like literally, if you had bought that, I probably would have bought that wholesale from you. Yeah. Sure. You know how you approach the landlocked? You approach it like my buddy used to approach his roofing jobs back in the day. He didn't want to do roofing anymore, so he doubled the price on every yep. job. And anybody who said yes, he'd be like, well, I got to do it. Well, I got to do it. Yep. So, like, you just look at that and you go, yeah, you want, what is it, 2000 Yeah, I'll give you 500 bucks. And if they say yes, well, you got to buy it. You know, because there you go. You got to buy it. It'll sell. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. I mean, Make a ridiculous offer on it. Yeah. It'll Make sell. a ridiculous it'll offer on it. I mean. Before. It'll sell. Um, the third, the grade was too, sleep, too steep of a slope. Again, is this. Sounds like a view. Is it, it, it sounds, like, it a sounds view. like a view. It sounds like an opportunity for a home on stilts. It sounds like. I, again, if I you can talk him down. What, what, whatever your offer was, I go back and break it into a quarter of that and just buy it. Yeah, yeah. correct. There is a point where you can't refuse it. Look, he that guy knows that, that property sucks, right? It is what it is. Um, and you may think that property sucks, but that's just two people out of everybody. And there are people who will go pay for that, especially if you can go to the market – Let's say the market's $150 a month for six years. You can go to the market and say, hey, it's $110 or $125 for five years or six years because you bought it at a third of what the next one costs that, quote, you like. There's a lot of love in those weird, hokey properties. And there's a lot of land investors who've been around a long time who will buy that stuff wholesale. Like, I, I wouldn't want to live there but that does not cloud my judgment on whether somebody else might want to live there. I'm not going to pay full, full price and full price is of course between 25% of the regular price. Right. But right. if that guy thinks it sucks, you know, being like, Hey, look, I know I offered you, you know, whatever, uh, 800 bucks or $1,100. Like, look, it's, it's this, it's that it's got this problem. It 250 buy it. I give you three. You'll sell for 500 minimum. I mean, you get you literally you get to do that. The thing is, you you've already sunk a thousand mailers into this, yeah. right? And so you might as well go low. And if they all say no, no problem. And if yeah. one of them says yes, you're going to recoup all those costs and go make money. 
So don't be afraid of that stuff. There's always money in front of you. There's always, every time a deal touches you, you know, you have an opportunity to make money on it. So don't yep. just be so quick. Just like the, when we talk about over the last few shows when people are like, oh, I don't work this county or I don't have money or, uh, to pay. Just look for a partner. Somebody, you know, put it out there. Hey, get a great deal. If you if you really truly offer them twenty five cents on a dollar, somebody's gonna fund that deal. Somebody's gonna want that deal. Don't yeah. just let it go. Yeah, I agree. I think there's meat on the bone there. It's not it's not perfectly wrapped up, right? Um, so you're not gonna pay regular price, but there's meat on the bone usually for that. Yeah, it's simple. It's uh, I listen. I I, I this property's on a very uh, steep slope. I know I offer you this. Honestly, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want it, but if you really want to let it go, I could, I, if you're really looking to get rid of it, I can pay you 250 bucks and, you know, take your and, wife out to dinner. Yeah. And, you know, and you, and then boom, you can't say no to that. Yeah. You can't I mean, say they, no to it. They, they do. Well, yeah, you're saying, yeah, he can't say no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they don't, you know, not everybody sells, blah, 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 no, blah. No, no, you can't uh, say no if he says yes. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> like, if you had mailed it $1,000, yeah. if it's 4000 is retail and you mailed it 1000 and that property sucks, and so you end up buying it for $200? $200? Sure. Yeah. And you probably sell it, instead of 4000 you probably sell it for 3000 Well, you wholesale for 1000 make 800 bucks. That's aggressive, but I like it. I like where you are. <laughs> Somebody who has a buyer's list and, and, and knows that, you know, look at this. Plenty of people out there right now, a buyer's list, but people looking for property, yeah. and they're waiting for that. And now you're like, look, at, I have someone who's just looking for that exact thing. They want to they wanna have an incline because they want to race their dirt bikes up, but I don't know, make up right. a reason. Somebody wants it. Yeah, and for 200 bucks, who cares? Yeah. Now, if it was, for, if it was uh, $20,000, okay. Yeah, yeah then care, you care. Right? That's real money. But two hundred bucks or five hundred bucks, something like that, whatever. Plus, uh, and you may not sell it in thirty. He'll, he'll buy you, it. Who cares? You may not sell it in thirty days, right? But what's the holding cost? You might sell it in thirty seconds. You might. Sell you it might. In 30 seconds. If you, you come might. on this show and you bought that property, I say go get that property for twenty-five percent of the twenty-five cents in the dollar. Come back this next show and sell it on our show. Next up, we have a. 1.5 acre landlocked property with beautiful trees. <laughs> There's no trees. But we own it 25% of 25%. On the... we, yeah. paid, we paid a dollar 37. The guy for paid it. us. Who wants to, to take buy it, it for two grand? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Part B question from Al J. Ford. So okay. he sent these thousand mailers out, right? Yes, sir. Uh, my, my other question is how, how long ago did you do that? Because I bet you're going to get more, more return offers, uh, uh, more, more purchase sale agreements signed, uh, from theirs. But anyway, he's wondering what he should do for a second mailing. Should he stick to this area? Uh, we're talking five, five to nine acre mountain terrain lots, right? Or should we go with 5,000 to 7,500 square foot? Infill lots. So, so infill lots is a business model you can go for. It's going to take a lot more mailers to get them. Uh, um, Forbes, you're frozen. My suggestion is you go for the. <laughs> yeah, you go for the. You go for the. You don't go for the infill lots if you really uh -huh. want to turn this quick. You go for uh, the rural vacant land, and yeah, you I keep agree. digging your heels into the area that you're in. Dig your heels in. Mailing. Yeah, dig them in. Dig them in deep. Hold your ground. Yeah. Uh, you want to focus. There's tons of land. For, wherever you are, I don't care where you are, there's tons of land there. Within that sort of, you can go out a few miles here, a few miles there, but stay in that same area. Infill lots are great um, if you get one, but it's going to take a lot more mailers. It's a whole different model. We move land quick. We buy a lot of I, land, and we buy rural land. I wonder if that's really an infill lot, though. Like, it, yeah, is it really... It, is it a is it a big grid, and it's just empty? Th those aren't really infill lots. If it's populated, right? And it sounds like it is populated. populated. Yeah. Oh, is he, he's saying it's populated. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm with um, I'm with Zeno. Infill lots are a, that's a different model. It's not a bad model. All it's, real estate's great. 
Yeah, but it's a different model. Um, if this is the model you've chosen, I, I'm with Zeno. I would stick to the to the rural vacant stuff. It's the easiest stuff to move, and so you have a better chance of getting some wins and some success and feeling good and feeling confident, and that's when good things can happen. Awesome. Uh, Kenneth Green is here and has a comment. Ken uh, Green, karate! He says... Uh, Pretty sure he says that RA is for resident a-hole. So, Ken, are you trying to throw down with Matt Forbes here? Because you're going to lose. <laughs> you are going to lose. I was not the RA. I was not the RA. Oh, I see. Oh, I thought you were the RA on the resident floor, on the, Ken Green, on the wellness floor. Ken Green, I zoning. I'm like, RA? Now I get it. He's talking about the, like, the RA. No, Matt was wasn't the RA. Matt, Matt was the RA's worst nightmare. Oh, one of my buddies was an RA, and he was removed from that position when I was done with him for uh, because you were supplying him with cases and cases of Sam Adams. So much fear. You have you have I mean, no idea. So, so, so much Sam Adams. What, it was, it was. What absurd. resident assistant would say no to that in college? Come on. The um, one who was on the wellness floor to begin with. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Eric Dempsey. For the wellness floor. Sorry, Eric Dempsey has a question. Uh, Mike Zano, could you go over the resources that LandGeek provides? For instance, software for pulling comps, creating mail campaigns, contracts, etc., and the kinds of fees that those things come with. LandGeek? LandGeek. Yeah, so LG Let's... Pass is our is the premier software that we use and that's going to be used to send out your mailers, keep track of your intake, create deeds uh, when you buy properties. On the sell side, it's going to create uh, a deed or sell a financing paperwork and so that that really is the heart and soul of deal flow right there, LG Pass. Um, I think that's $99 a month. I believe that's what yeah. LG Pass is. The other... Um, you know, well-known land geek product is geek pay. This is going to allow you to track your monthly payments. You're going to generate down payment links, dock fee links, uh, generate monthly reports on your income. It's really essential to just, you know, taking money from people on the properties to sell them in a very organized fashion that allows, it makes you look super professional. So those two things alone are the biggest, um, uh, type software that we offer other software out there we you know there's there's tons of other software out there that we may have opportunities to use but software is one part of the equation really what you need to understand is the swim lane the workflow how it how to how to how to generate you know how to move the deals down the pipeline right and that's the real key i mean so to me it takes software it takes people and it takes <laughs> Dedication, and I'm turning it over to Matt Ford. Who asked the question? I don't know. Uh, that was uh, Eric Dempsey. He's a yeah. Yankees fan. He's a Yankees fan. So well, that's one strike. Um, <laughs> a couple of Boston guys here. Um, so Eric, respectfully, it's the wrong question. Here's what I mean by that: it is not the software you use that makes you successful right it that's not what gets it done those are just tools right what and again i don't work here i don't know why i'm here but i, I don't work here like I, i'm not part of this organization i'm an outside party who's had their life changed and i so i'm here you're not an outside party well I like but like I don't you know, are like matt I don't fortune 500 you're four. you have a nickname so i feel like i'm part you're of on the round table pot listen point. like I'm here because Mark changed my life, right? And these guys did too, and so it's my way of giving back. Um, but it's the wrong question, right? It's not like, oh, do I use this or, I, or, or do I use that? It's how do you go build a sustainable business and outsource it and no one else teaches this? What a great this. word. I love sustainable. You know, you hear it's, about that in a lot of different areas of uh, – you know, life, you know, sustainable. But when it comes to business, what a great word. That's a great word right there. Cool. Um, <laughs> say it again. <laughs> Move. But. That's almost uh, as good as the other word. Could you include the other word in this conversation? Go. Uh, oh, I 
forgot what the other word was. Oh my god. Come on, the D word. Demont. Demonstrably. Oh, demonstrably. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, demonstrably what they do. No. Uh, no, but seriously, that it's it's the building of the business that's hard. You, you can go mail. You don't need LG Pass to go mail. You could go set up a loan. You don't need you don't need the uh, Geek Pay. Like Geek Pay. Oh my God, I have a 90 notes in Geek Pay. I can't think of the name. You don't need Geek Pay to go do it. But if you want to go create a business for real that operates independently of you and get your freedom. Right. That is a different question, and I argue that that is the right question. And that's what they teach. That's why I went with Land Geek, and it's why I'm so happy about it, is because I built a business that functions on its own. Do they have cool tools? Yeah. Do I use GeekPay? Damn right I do. It's the best thing out there, for sure. I've looked at everything. But that's like the secondary stuff, right? Having them teach you how to do it. How do you, how do you go get a VA? How do you train a VA? How do you think about it? This is the stuff that matters. Right. If you're gonna go build a business, that's the hard stuff. And so, <clears throat> yeah, though, I mean, do they have all the cool tools? They do, yeah, sure. But they, ha oh, uh, one second, Bosman. Uh, but they will teach you the stuff <laughs> that I think is more important. Uh, it's got it too hotty. Now suddenly, suddenly I must say though, Scott, Scott, your shirt's popping all of a sudden. Did something change in the lights? You notice that, folks? His shirt is popping. I mean, he's so handsome, it hurts. No, oh, that's yeah, like no, do it. Yeah, do there, it. Is there, is there a picture hidden in that shirt? That <laughs> that's shirt? funny. If I focus that... my eyes a certain way, will I see a picture? It's, 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 yeah, it's, I think you. I think you may. Out right now. <laughs> I think you may. Uh, I didn't roll my sleeves up. I should do that though, because there's oh, a little. But little but decoration on there you need to go get like a pack of smokes in there maybe like, yeah right you know marlboro menthols for you but be I'm like uh, schneider from one day at a time you guys remember that He's that was a long time man. ago um Bossman. but uh here, here's the other thing i would say uh to eric yes matt Forbes, i agree with everything you said right Good answer. You, well, you're sure. gonna need you're gonna need some tools to help you in this business. Yeah, Land Geek, sure. Mark says this all the time. We're tool agnostic. It doesn't matter what you use. It matters that you are okay. There to me, there are some cornerstones to this business. What are the cornerstones? Mailing, marketing. Mm -hmm. Those two things you need to do every single day, and you need to do them in a higher volume than you think you do. And there is, uh, you need one to two focused hours a day to, to get this to where you want to get it. And you need to not give up to get this to where you want to give it, get it. So really the tools don't matter. And honestly, Matt Forbes, you maybe spend a little bit more than me monthly, but like six years into this, the monthly overhead in this business, it's it's so minuscule. Like you take care of it with one cash deal or one wholesale deal. So you know what? Find whatever works best for you and just use it with the intent to mail every day and market every day. That's what matters. Hey Amen. I, I built my business wholesaling. I mean, that's how I did it. I, and, and I don't mean like not like Zeno or yeah, like not like Zeno, but built i kept my business afloat by wholesaling i'd go make a couple thousand bucks a month wholesaling a property or two every single month well and that and that's what kept the lights on well i think that's a, we talk about a healthy business can use all of these uh methods you know wholesale retail land arb uh holiday inn, ho holiday ho inn. Ho <laughs> hotel right um selling notes i mean all these things come together to make a very healthy business uh, and that is a good sign. Who has that? Oh, there it is. Oh, wholesale. wholesale. Uh, Holiday Inn. So Eric, Demp Eric Dempsey, hopefully that helps. Hopefully it helps as we get off our soapboxes. Uh, let's see. Darren Nichols is here. Darren Nichols, uh, he's the guy I stalk on Facebook, uh, Matt Forbes. You remember that? Yeah, yeah uh, I do. It's good, creepy. Good to see you. Uh, Darren, it was your, uh, pretty sure it was your wife's birthday yesterday. So happy birthday to her. How um, so much about the community. He's in touch with the community. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's in touch 
He's in touch like with you. Darren Nichols. He puts the lotion in the basket with with the community, specifically with Darren. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Come on, man. There you go again. You're it's you're pushing it. Basket. You're pushing it to the R-rated version of the nightcap. Didn't Why didn't you drop the f bomb while you're at it? That was just a reference to a great a movie. Can, a great I swear. Movie. Why didn't, why didn't you just drop the f bomb while you're at it and take it to I the next not. level? I will not. I heard that you, if you do that, they downgrade your YouTube. So I will. I will oh not. well, thanks for that. David Bryden is here. What's up, Dave? Uh, he has a question. If you're selling properties in Arizona and Nevada, would you post ads on Craigslist anywhere in the country? or only a certain distance from the property? That's a great question. That, ha that comes up a lot, that question. And uh, I think the answer is, we've had people who've had a lot of success advertising in areas where people who live in those areas would like to have land in other areas. But you know, then I go and I say that if I was looking for land in Florida or New Mexico, I would probably be looking in Florida or New Mexico. So I mean, you can go either way with it, but I think, uh, Experiment and see what happens for you. Yeah, it's, it's both. I've seen people. Yeah, I think it's both. Right. Or you can take my attitude, which is I don't post on Craigslist anymore. So there's all sorts of <laughs> angles you can take in that bad boy. There are different angles you can take. Um, yes. I mean, you know, different approaches. Three hour radius around the property, market there, right? Yep. Market there on Craigslist, market there on Zillow. Well, obviously on Zillow. Market there on uh, on Facebook. However, David Bryden, I live in the Great White North. Uh, it is freaking cold up here in Wisconsin in the winter. It is uh, minus 60 below wind chill. And I will tell you that I've sold Arizona property to people in Minneapolis groups on Facebook or Milwaukee groups on Facebook. So cast your net far and wide. Uh it just it's just a matter of how big you cast the net how it, over I, what area you cast the net i so i would argue that the what's more important than than where you post is just the volume that you post yeah right i think the volume is more important than where i mean where is key so but, the fact that you are posting is key yeah. well if i were to post on craigslist i when when i used to post on craigslist i would post a lot but i had properties in florida and I sold so many of them, like you know, Bosman saying to people to snowboards from New England. I'd post him. Yeah. In, I live in Massachusetts. I, I sold one from a guy in Worcester, right? He was awesome. Paid for two years and defaulted. Worcester, sure. Worcester. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna hurt myself. After the Sorry, I didn't mean Worcester. to interrupt you. It's just awful. I so yeah. <laughs> I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Don't be mad. Um, don't be mad? Who else can he be? Don't, don't be mad. Don't be mad. Don't um, be mad. Mary Graham. Oh, this is you guys ready for a compliment to, to boost your fragile ego? Uh, you guys are the... Fragile. It could crumble you, any minute. You guys are the perfect antidote to a long day. <laughs> Mary Graham. We're the nice. Advil of land investing. Yeah, <laughs> the Admiral Land Investing. Oh, uh, by the way, I thought of you guys this morning because um, creepy, I, creepy. I, I, I will admittedly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit this on live television in front of our no, millions no, of viewers. No, wait, wait, I, okay, I, I do it. I I'm advising against it. I'm advising <laughs> against it. That, that, no, maybe not. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, but. I got I got my three boys up for school this morning, right? And uh, made my cup of coffee, and it was a beautiful sunny morning. And I thought, wow, I'm gonna get so much done today. And I just thought, wow, I'm just kind of tired, and I just need to lay back down. So I went back to bed. I'm not gonna lie, went back to bed until we come into the equation nine fifteen. But anyway, my alarm goes off at nine fifteen, and I get this alert on my phone from Clubhouse. Whoa, whoa, and whoa, 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 hold on. Stop the stop the presses. That's just because you went back to bed. You don't wake up at 915 regularly, do you? 
No, I just went back today. I went back today. Okay, all right. I'm just making sure I don't have to fly to Wisconsin. Matt's been up for like phone. four hours at that point. <laughs> I get up at 5 a.m. I have been up for four hours. Yes. Today I went back to bed. I'm like, Sorry. I'm sleepy. Sorry. Went back to bed. Anyway, I got an alert on my phone this morning that these two dudes were on Clubhouse talking about real estate investing. So... I want to hear from the audience. Who's up for a Land Geek Clubhouse morning oh, yes. broadcast? Oh, Lord. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Good luck with that. Right, Matt Forbes? No, I'm at work. I have to go to work. All right. Sano? Slave. Go to Clubhouse with me in the morning? I will do whatever you think is uh, whatever you want, boss, but I'm in. <laughs> whatever, dude. <laughs> you... No. Oh, he's getting mad. He's but I'm sleeping till nine fifteen tomorrow morning. That's for sure. All right, do it, do it. That's the that's one of the perks of being a land investor and a former physical therapist. Former meaning I've retired from that job. You know uh, that I only chastise you because I wish I was you, right? You do understand this, Matt Forbes. I'm telling you, January first, uh, twenty twenty three. You're there. Yeah. 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 We'll uh, all right. Um, all right. Eric Dempsey. Okay, we got to go soon. Eric Dempsey says he's pulled a list of 150 properties, land parcels, and plan to direct mail them this week. Great. Just Good just wondering, wondering how much it could cost to see if I could buy it right away or grind more and figure it out myself before investing in the software. Uh, okay. Are so, like LG? Is that like LG Pass? Yeah. So, I mean... Eric Dempsey, you got to think about your return on time invested. So are you going to set up a spreadsheet in Excel and mail merge over to Word and print off a bunch of offer letters and stuff all the offer letters yourself and it's going to take you three hours to send out 100 mailings? Or are you going to upload an, uh, upload a list in LG Pass and click Send? So you got to ask yourself what your time is worth when it comes to that type of thing. Yeah. Forbes, you're tired. You know what's funny? Forbes is tired. I never, I never printed out an offer and sent it. I've never. Yeah, done that it is funny. Time. It's funny. You're on mute there, Zeno. Or, yeah, you're on mute. We're gonna need you to do a hundred by next week. I'm, I'm gonna go send a thousand next week, but I'm gonna do it by, you know, with mouse clicks. It's mouse clicks, yes. So, Eric Dempsey, I would just ask you to, you know. Think about your return on time invested. If $99 a month is going to help you send a lot of mailing and, a, a, you know, we're going to talk about this next week. This is our, this is our topic for All next right. week. We're ready for our next week's topic. Yeah. It's a good. All right. Yeah. More mail. Eric, whatever gets more mail out the door, if that's you doing it yourself. Listen, you we got to leave the viewers stamps. wanting right. more. We got to leave them wanting more. We can't give them everything tonight. We oh, want why not? We want to leave Few them more comments. More. Stephanie Chirimbero is here. She says Clubhouse is a great idea. Yeah. Huh? A morning Clubhouse show. Darren Nichols, uh, my buddy, says he just got a nice sale. He bought for twelve hundred, sold for forty nine hundred. So one fifty down, one hundred a month for forty eight months. So, so Darren, was there a doc fee on that? Because uh, you're getting your money out in. What, ten to twelve months? Yeah, it's and beautiful. after that, that's a beautiful, beautiful deal. Katie Ross Sharmer's here. She met with LandVAForYou.com. Super excited for the next step of our business. LandVAForYou.com uh, is amazing, and uh, LandGeek Who's has partnered. It's Pete and Anthony. Oh, yeah, I they... used the crap out of them. I didn't know yeah. the name of the company. Yeah, no. Yeah, no by use... the way, they're awesome. They are awesome. Awesome. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. They're awesome. Keith Forche says, spend the money on mailing. I tried it once and it was hours wasted. I could have been working leads. Good point, Keith Forche. That's it. And a 199 doc fee. Darren, Darren Nichols, 199 doc fee. So 199 doc fee. Uh, he's out in 10 months or less. It's an amazing deal. Good work. Darren Nichols, you're killing it. Fine. Fine. My Kansas City best friend. Creepy. It puts the oh. lotion in the basket. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
Love it. I just follow him on Facebook. He shows up all the time in my feed. I don't know what to tell you. He's the Hannibal Lecter of land investing. Welcome, <laughs> Scott Dawson. <Dawkins. laughs> I'll bring my hockey mask next week. Well, excuse me, a size 16. Yeah, it's good. It's it's not creepy at all. Wow. All right, everybody. Well, uh, for, uh, Zeno, we got to work on the clubhouse show, the morning clubhouse all show. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Matt Forbes, love you. Aw, hugs and kisses. Oh, and uh, I love myself. I 